I believe Madame Moreau has seen enough. You're a very talented dancer, madame. But of course, it's not your talent we came here to discuss. You don't honestly believe I'll pay you 50,000 American dollars for that film, do you? One can see other dancers doing the same thing in cabarets all the time. Ah, but we're not talking about other dancers, Mrs. Moreau. That's the crucial point, madame. We're talking about you. The wife of René Moreau, member of the Chamber of Deputies. That film would ruin his political career. And more importantly for you, your marriage. You see, I happen to know a little something about the way your husband thinks. He's rather narrow-minded about the sort of thing that we just saw in that film. We'll expect the money within a week, madame. But I don't have $50,000. Now, Mark and I have to pack to catch your plane back to Algiers. You must excuse us. Didn't you hear me? You heard me. That's all that's important. Her name was Marie Moreau. She was calling from Paris. And even over 6,000 miles of wire and cable, I could detect the ragged edge of panic in her voice. She needed help, a lot of it. It had been several years since I'd been to Paris. Marie Moreau's call was all the excuse I needed to visit it again. She hadn't told me why she needed my services. It was something that couldn't be discussed on the phone. She'd offered to cable me half my fee in advance. I told her I collected the person. When I'd asked her how to contact her in Paris, she told me to register at the Hotel Etoile in Montmartre, and she would be in touch with me. 24 hours after boarding a plane in San Diego, I was unpacking my bag in Paris and settling down to wait for Marie Moreau to contact me. My wait was over before it even began. The concierge was a friend of hers. He'd called her the minute I checked in. Mrs. Moreau? Yes. You sit down. Well, I suppose you've been wondering how I knew about you. You once did some work for an acquaintance of mine in the States, Well, and suppose I... we talk about the work you want me to do for you. I'm being threatened with blackmail. It's about a film, a motion picture I made in Cairo over ten years ago. Go on. Well, I... I was a chorus girl in a nightclub. The, the club closed. I... I couldn't find another job, and I needed money. I met a man who made the sort of films that are sometimes shown at men's parties. This man offered me $500 to do what, what he called an exotic dance. That was a great deal of money to me in those days. So you made the picture and it's come back to haunt you. If I were the wife of anyone else, of some obscure bank clerk, the film wouldn't be worth anything. But my husband is René Moreau. Head of Moreau Industries. He's also a member of the Chamber of Deputies, isn't he? And he's soon to be appointed to a very high position in the government. What would happen if he saw the film? He'd divorce me without giving me a chance to explain. It's true. If you knew René, you'd know just how true. He won't tolerate for a moment anything that might reflect on the good name of Moreau. Oh, I'm not exaggerating, believe me. Oh, I believe you. But you don't quite approve of me, do you? Well, that isn't why you hired me, is it? Now, who has the film? Two men in Algiers. One is named Voss, the other's name is Sidon. I'm to pay them $50,000 delivered at this address in Algiers by next Tuesday. Cafe Cashin, Street of the Ten Profits. How much money could you raise if you had to? I don't know. Not $50,000. As much as $25,000? Yes. How soon? By tomorrow. I'll get it for me. To pay Voss and Sidon? No, to set a trap. 
I heard from Marie Moreau the next day about noon. We were to meet at four that afternoon on the observation platform atop the Eiffel Tower. She would have the $25,000 with her. Miss Moreau. Oh, hello. I had to borrow it. I used my jewelry as collateral. Well, you'll get your money back and be able to redeem your jewelry in a few days. I hope so. Of course, there's no guarantee of that. There's nothing to stop me from taking this and forgetting about going to Algiers. There's nothing in the world you could do about it without letting your husband know what the money was for. Why are you trying to frighten me? Am I succeeding? No. <laughs> well, I hope I don't look as honest to Boston side as I do to you. Why not? Well, if we're gonna get that film back, they have to be convinced that I'm double-crossing you. I instructed Marie to cable Voss and Seiden, telling them she had designated me as her emissary, and that I would be in the Café Kashim at 9 o'clock that night. Then I went looking for a bank with a branch in Algiers. I caught an afternoon flight to Algiers, and at 9 that night, I was in the Street of the Ten Prophets in the Kasbah. In fiction, the Kasbah has been pictured as a place of mystery, romance, and intrigue. Well, perhaps it is, but I had absolutely no desire to stay there long enough to find out. I've walked some tough streets and some dangerous corners of the world in my time, but never one quite like that narrow little alley in the Kasbah, where I felt no one would hesitate to cut my throat to steal the laces from my shoes. Don't you try looking behind you. I'll go tell Voss. Did you ever think how much more we'd have if you didn't tell Voss? some men named Voss and Seiden. And with me, monsieur. I don't mind. Voss and Seiden are waiting. you showed Marie Moreau. What makes you think that's not it? It'll show me that I'm wrong. We don't have a projector here. Got one. It would take time. I'm in no hurry. We are, aren't we, Mark? Newspaper. Yeah, I put it in for ballast. Why, no! You didn't really think I was going to walk in here with that money. Not really. It was the possibility. Now the question is, did Marie Moreau give you any money at all? And it's right here in Algiers. Where? Well, we have nothing more to say to each other until I've seen that film. Oh, don't be too sure of that. Put him back on his leash. Stop it, you fool! Get out of my way, boss! That's enough, Mark. There's no harm in showing him the film. 
We don't have the film here. You'll have to come with us. Bring your car around to the front. Just a minute. I hope you're not entertaining any plans which involve the police. Well, I couldn't very well bring the police into this without them finding out about the film, could I? And if the police find out about it, Marie Moreau's husband would find out about it too, wouldn't he? He would. Well, then quit worrying about the police. down on the floor. Now look, boss, I told you I couldn't involve the police. You might have brought friends. The heels of Yvonne's shoes are like stilettos, monsieur. Try to move or cry out and she will know what to do. I'll follow in my car. Southwest of Algiers. Set up the projector. Make some coffee. What was taking place on the screen, it was a little hard to keep my mind on my work. But I kept reminding myself that I had to somehow separate Voss and Sidon, get one of them alone long enough to get the film away. I preferred it to be Voss. That's worth $50,000? Yeah, every penny of it. But you're not going to get it from Marie Moreau. Oh? What makes you say that? All she could scrape up was $25,000. We told her what to do. Never deal mind what you told her. You're not dealing with her now. You're dealing with me. There's a difference. Yeah, there's a big difference. I have her $25,000 now. So if you show that film to her husband, there's no skin off my nose. I see. But Madame Moreau's 25,000 wasn't all you wanted, or you wouldn't have come to Algiers. That's right. I want this, too. Well, oh, mister, you don't get that for any $25,000. Particularly since we have no reason to believe that you have that amount. What's that? Bank draft for $25,000. Payable only to you upon presentation in person at the bank and upon sufficient identification, such as my passport. So don't get any ideas about taking this away from me and forging my signature. Wouldn't work. It seems we have reached an impasse, monsieur. Unless you have a second bank draft for another 25,000. It's every dime I have. And Mark will drive you back to Algiers. You know, I'm surprised at you two. I expected to meet up with a couple of sharp operators. My apologies for disappointing you. While you're worrying about getting that 50,000, I know some men that'd be glad to buy it for three or four times that amount. Oh? Name one. I can name half a dozen. Look, Marie Moreau's husband is a member of the Chamber of Deputies. Right now, he's waiting for an appointment to one of the highest positions in the French government. Yeah, yeah, we know all that. What's your point, monsieur? Politically, René Moreau is a powerful man. 
A powerful men have powerful enemies. Some of them would pay anything to kick the props out from under Moreau's career. That film you have would do it. As Mark said, we know all this. Yes, but what you don't know is the identity of the men who would pay, or you wouldn't be fooling around with Marie Moreau. Do you know how these men can be safely contacted? Now, if you'll let me have that film, I'll split the take with you right down the center. <laughs> Get him. Well, here's a deal, boss. You take that film, we'll go into Algiers tomorrow and take the plane to Paris. We'll sell that film to the men I know for 150, maybe 200,000. What about the 25,000 you already have? Well, if you want that, just give me the film. No, wait, wait. If anybody goes with that film, we all go. What's the matter? Don't you trust, boss? I don't trust you. Well, I'll go with one of you. Either you or Voss. Doesn't matter which one, but just one. Why just one? I don't like being outnumbered. <laughs> and if you get Voss alone with that film, what's to keep you from trying to get it away from him, huh? Well, not a thing. But I'm smart enough to know that if I tried, I might fail. So I'd be gambling a sure payoff against maybe winding up dead. Those aren't very good odds, my friend. Well? We'll think about it. Well, don't think about it too long. I didn't bring a toothbrush. You can wait in there. Boss, Sidon, and Yvonne did a lot of thinking, most of it at the tops of their voices. I couldn't make out what they were saying, so I didn't know what had been decided when the debate finally ended. Decision? You and I will leave at 8 o'clock in the morning for Algiers. With the film? With the film. Sidon happy? I can handle Sidon. The way you handled him when he got after me with that gun? From where I was standing, it was the girl that was doing the handling of Sidon. Don't worry about Mark. How about I do? Right now, I'm worried about him being in there alone with that film. The film's in the safe, and I'm the only one who knows the combination. Well, I can sleep peacefully then. I thought Voss would try to pull something. But I didn't think you'd stand around and let him get away with it. Yeah, well, he's not getting away with anything. Oh, then, then maybe there's something I don't understand. Something you should explain to me. Look, all I know is that Voss is leaving here tomorrow morning with that film. And maybe we'll see him again and... And maybe we won't. Oh. Uh... He'll come back. Who says he will? Oh, except Voss. Look, Mark, if Voss doesn't trust you enough to send you with Adams, why should we trust him enough to let him go? And this Adams man, what do we know about him? I mean, who is he? What is he and what's he up to? I know, but Voss trusts him. Voss, Voss. Do we have to trust him just because Voss does? And besides, Maybe Voss has a reason to trust him. You think they know each other, that they're working something between them, huh? I don't know. That's the trouble. I don't know anything except that we're fools to let Voss get away with that film. I'll go have another talk with him. What will that get you except another argument? Ah, uh, there's one way to make sure Voss doesn't take that film. Yeah? And what's that? for us to take it. I'll get the film and we'll be on our way. All right, get your hands up. If you can handle him, boss, you better get started. Shut up. Boss, open the safe. You're spoiling what could have been a very good thing, Mark. Sure, sure. Come on, get it open. What are you going to do with the film after you get it, or have you thought that far ahead? Come on, get it open. You know, you'll have to take it to Paris to get rid of it, and Voss and I'll be right on your heels. That's if you find us. Well, if we don't find you, all we have to do is tell the police about the film. Then who'll pay you anything for it? Get the film. Give it to him. 
What are you going to do? She's going to make sure we don't follow you. Fine. Oh, shut up. Now let's get out of here. kilometers back to Algiers, but I made it in time to catch an afternoon flight back to Paris. I don't know how to thank you. Well, my fee is your thanks. I already cashed that bank draft and deducted it. There's the balance. Now you go home, lock yourself in your room, and burn that film. You haven't said anything about Voss and Sidon. Well, you won't be hearing any more from them. I know, they're dead. I heard a news broadcast just before coming here. It said the Algerian police have decided that Voss, Sidon, and some woman were killed during a jealous fight, apparently over the woman. Is that all it said? Well, there were reports that a third man had been involved, but the police have discounted them. Well, if the police are satisfied, we should be too, don't you think? 